everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. What's up, folks? So, we just recently did a top 10 list in which we uh, talked about our top 10 turkeys, games that over time we like less than we used to. Oh! <laughs> it's the face. That's the thing that comes with it. <laughs> <laughs> and... I totally lost my train of thought. Okay, no, so some people <laughs> have accused would. us of being too negative, right? So today we're going to do positive games that we like more now than we used to. Which yes. is actually, for me, was a harder one to make. Oh my god! Incredibly gosh. harder. Way harder, yeah. Sam and I were talking about this, and it's just... I mean, I could. You, it makes sense to wean yourself off of a game because you uh, there are now better games. You have started to notice the cracks in the walls, so to speak. Mm -hmm. To have a game that gets better for you, unless it's a game that is so subtle that it takes so many plays to reveal itself to you, otherwise I couldn't really come up with a whole lot. Now, I know that part of this is second versions, that's fair game, expansions, that's fair mm -hmm. game, and those are a lot easier to, to pinpoint. But I, didn't, I wanted to try to make sure it wasn't just, okay, all these games have expansions, the expansions are good, hence they are better. Done. Right. You know, so there is a mix on my list, at least, of, of you know, expansions that made a game better or, or some games that did get better for me. Yeah, I, about, uh, I, I have this moniker, about half of my list are second editions yeah. and One through five. expansions and actually no that's the bottom half of my list okay because i kind of for those i kind of already liked them yeah but the liking of them was enriched or made better some way with that expansion or with that second edition the top half of my list i put that as games that i simply didn't like to begin with and for one reason or another I like them now. Wow, that's crazy. I don't know if any of these games are games I would say I didn't like. Well, I have a, mine is just basically you know? an order of how much the difference between yeah. my liking has changed. I've, yeah. al I've also done that as yeah. well. So like my number one, I, I like much, much more than I used to. My number 10, I used to like it. Now I like it even more. Okay. Cool. <laughs> So with that very scientific criteria, <laughs> let's get started. Number 10. So my number 10 is a game that I liked from the get-go. Uh, I told you I was going to start with my number 10. is a game that I already liked, but now I like it more. And the reason I like it more is because the more I've played it, the more I've understood that the more players I have with it, the funner it is. Okay. And I know funner isn't kind of really a word, but you get what <laughs> it, I mean. Not really. It is when you add it to the word factory. Factory. No, at funner. that point it becomes a lie. Oh, it's, it becomes flipped. Yes. Factory, get out of my face. Yeah, exactly. I'm yes. super confused by this so, English lesson. <laughs> my number 10 is a game called Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. Okay. I, I, I liked this game from the beginning, but when Undercover Allies comes out and came out, whoa. It just blew it off the top. This is by far, I, I don't think this game will ever leave my top 10 games of all time. I'll put it. Ah, ah, I don't think it'll mark this ever moment leave down. It because I enjoy this game so much and it doesn't matter. Come back in 2028. <laughs> I know, and it'll be Deception, Murder of the Jarl. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be like, this one is better. It is better. No, I, I mean, Undercover Allies just blew the top off of this thing, and they did so. The, the addition of the different um, uh, roles that are in there, the Inside Man, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, oh, what is the guy? I always forget this guy's name. The uh, Frank. No, not Frank. <laughs> The one who can just—I mean, there's the one who can just reveal themselves and be like, "It's not me," but they don't get to vote. No, it's not him. It, that it's, one? it's the I like that one. it's the the bodyguard guy, the bodyguard, the guy I think that it's called is the supposed bodyguard. To, no, I don't think it is. But and I just call him will Kevin. Anyway, yeah, love you. Kevin. Um, no, Cosmo. everything about thanks for hitting that on the nose. This thing. sure expansion just blew the top off of Deception Murder in Hong Kong for me. So I liked it. Now I love it. All right, cool. I liked it in the beginning. All right, my number, I haven't played with the I expansion I liked it before it was cool, man. <laughs> That's what Tom's saying for all of these. Yeah, well, I liked it before it was cool. Actually, my number 10 was one of the most hyped games ever to come out in existence, and I liked it 
But as time has gone by, and with expansions, and every time I play it, I'm like, man, I love this game and that Scythe. Hmm. Scythe is continually moving oh. up for me all the time. If you remember, we did our top 100 last year. did not make my top 100. Okay. Uh, that okay. may not be the case this year, right? It is just continually... Every time I play it, I'm like, man, this game is so smooth of an engine how it works. And the airships didn't hurt. And, of course, this is even before the legacy yeah, expansion yeah, thing comes out. I was like, what? That's exciting. <laughs> Am I going to be able to finally pull stuff up with these mechs? I don't know, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, right. Come on! But, right now they're just transports. But despite that, I still I just think this game's fantastic. So side is my number ten. Cool. My number ten is a kids game that at first I just considered a kids game, wasn't really um, particularly enamored with it, but the more I've played it with kids and adults, and usually a mixed group, the more I've enjoyed it. This is one you like as well. Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. Ghost That's a good one. Hunters. Ghost Fight and Treasure it's Hunters a is, a, is a co-op game in which the kids are running into the mansion, grabbing loot, getting out, uh, you know, avoiding the ghosts, overwhelming the place. It does kind of feel like Pandemic Junior in some ways. Yeah. It's got you know, sort of like the same like things build and then poof, they pop, you right. know. And I really enjoy it. It's a game that just works smoothly and yes, there is some luck, but it's engaging. It's fun. It's got highs and lows. It's just a really neat design, and 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 you know uh, apparently so because it did win uh, awards, some very prestigious awards. But uh, yeah, it's just one of those games that I would say don't dismiss just because it is a kids game. Right. This is going to go over well with maybe not just adults, you know, especially if they're very strategic players. But a mixed group that would work very well, I think. Mm -hmm. So that is Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters, my number ten. There's also like Ghostbusters version of this. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's so, right. Is there? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's made based on a new movie. Oh. Um, that's and right. it's the exact same game. Uh, the the component quality is not quite as good. Oh. They dropped the component quality, okay, well but they added a rule that I liked about an extra special ghost that was in there, and I can't remember what it was. But well, I believe changed. you can get that now for the other version as well. Oh, oh, okay. That's right. They had it. They just that made little, an expansion. Like a little for this. pack. You can get a little right. pack that has some extra tiles, some extra rules, and that's that's okay. nice too. All right. Cool. Cool. All right, my number nine, when it first came out, I was like, why would I want to play this game when I can play Star Wars, collectible card game, Overpower, and all those other things? And that's Magic the Gathering. Really, for me, Magic the Gathering mm -hmm. has been a consistent upward climb to some degree. Mm -hmm. Now, I know I got rid of all my Magic cards last year, um, but I, well, I didn't get rid of all of them because I still have some Commander decks. And Commander's part of the reason that I like Magic the Gathering more, but it just... Right. Magic the Gathering is an interesting game to me because as the years have gone by, it's not bloated, really. They have done a really good job of being, being able to go to the store, get a new deck mm -hmm. that came out, and still be able to play it very easily. Mm -hmm. And after playing a lot of other collectible card games and a lot of other living card games and all this, with their complexities and everything, Magic is still one of the easiest things to play. Now, I know on high levels and with all these cards and combos, there could be all, there's a FAQ that's right. you know 700 pages long, but... Well, no, well, I mean, to cover every situation that's possible, they definitely have it out there. But that's the way it is for every collectible card game. There was one for Star Wars, too. Remember I printed that one out in college? There's a reason I don't play it anymore, too. college ran out of ink for that one month. Yeah, I, I just went up there when no one was looking and printed it. <laughs> um, but I, I really, Magic, it, it's just a solid game. And, I, and as time has gone by, I've enjoyed it. And I think that they've done better, honestly, as the years have gone by. At these starter decks. Hmm. It yeah. used to be the starter decks were like, here, and you're like, well, this deck's not good. Let me get some more cards. Now the starter decks and the dual decks dual are decks, really yeah. solid to start out with, and they're fun, and they're like a game in of itself. So match it to Gathering. And they've tried new things. That's the other thing. They're, they're not, um, they haven't stagnated. They keep trying new things. Commander, dual decks, all of those things, really fun stuff. All right, my number nine is a, uh, also co-op, actually, and this is a tile-laying game called Subterra. Oh. That when I first played, I there were a couple of things in there that I wasn't sure why they were in there. Mainly, this idea of you can move on your turn for an action, or you can peek at a tile for an action, and then take a further action to move on to it. And I'm like, okay. Uh, I, I, and I had players, myself and other players, who couldn't see the benefit of one or maybe couldn't see the benefit of the other. We weren't sure, like, okay, what's Aren't the point? are you the guy who didn't peek at a tile and flew into the sun in Zaya? Yes, right. Well, in this game, this, this is how I played it the first time I played, peeking at every tile because I want to see what's coming up. And then I would move on to it. 
What happened the first game is we ran out of time and we hadn't gone through half the tiles. You're supposed to explore every tile. And I thought this game is broken. I mean, this game doesn't work. Some, something's off here. Something's going on. That was a first play. So obviously I kept on playing it and it kept getting better for me. And I started to see the subtleties of when you peek, when you don't, how quickly you need to move, when you want to hang back, not splitting your party versus sometimes splitting your party. Wait a minute, I could tell you that. I watch enough movies. <laughs> Walk into the creepy haunted house. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a game that, again, keeps getting better for me, and I have uh, really started to enjoy it a lot more. Solid exploration co-op game with a cool theme. It's neat. So that is Subterra. Check it out if you like that sort of thing. My number nine is a dice game that uh, I thought was okay. I enjoyed it, and I liked the theme of it when it first came out. Um, but I was just kind of, yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. I like it. Uh, King of Tokyo is what I'm talking about. I liked it, but I thought, you know. I'm trying this to remember is... this time frame when you did not love the game. Well, come on. I, 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 again, like I said, I liked the game when it came out. But again, it was just basically themed um, Yahtzee. Yahtzee, yeah. But then you played it one million times. And then I played it a million <laughs> times. And then they came out with the Power Up expansion. And the Power Up expansion is where I was like, okay, this is what the game should have been when it first came out. They should have released this power, these Power Up cards with the original set because this is how this game should be. I actually disagree. I think they should not have because the game is so oh. easy for people to play as is. The Power Up cards would have confused people. I don't think so. I think you underestimate people's intelligence because I think you overestimate the, the Power Up expansion just seems like it fits. It's what it should have been. You shouldn't have all of these generic monsters that look different, but they're basically just the same. Uh, you shouldn't have that. Every power should be, every monster should have their own abilities, their own little things that they can do. Uh, so I, th I think the Power Up expansion is, is exactly what King of Tokyo needed to have more longevity. And it does. So that's my number nine, King of Tokyo, because of the Power Up expansion. I, I mean, I, I do agree. I think the Power Up expansion makes the game better. I really enjoy it. I just don't think they should have published it with I do, it. I do think the Power Up expansion is one of the best expansions uh, that, that, has been released. I, I really do. Yeah. It fits it to a T. It is so, it's on the one hand so obvious, and on the other hand so right. It could have been an advanced rules section in the, in, in the advanced rule, in, in the rule. But it would also add it to the cost of the game yeah. and more things. Yeah. The game I'm was okay. pretty inexpensive. Yeah, I'm okay with it having come out later, but I do think it's just such a good expansion. It is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh. All right, my number eight is a little bit of a cheat, largely because this game, I think, is designed to be a game that you like more the more you play. Mm. That is Risk Legacy. Why? Mm. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Risk Legacy, when you commence playing it, is... Let me click change my list, put Pandemic Legacy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> hey, man, I said it was a little bit of a cheat. Uh, Risk Legacy is largely Risk when you first start playing, and as the game unfolds, as you play more and more sessions, it becomes more interesting, and it did for me. And I could see some people not liking that. That's okay. I could see some people not liking the directions that the game takes or finding what they thought was a very pure, simple system diluted among too many little rules. That's another thing that could happen, and I think it has happened in other similar style games. But Risk Legacy had a good balance of starting from the familiar and taking you somewhere that maybe not uh, wasn't entirely unexpected, but really you know infused some interesting action into the uh the game and and the new sessions so i really like it and again i think when you are looking simply at that idea of games getting better as you're going risk legacy just makes sense so yeah it's a little bit of a cheat but hey it fits that's my number eight all right, my number eight is uh again like i said the top half of my list is going to be games that i liked but something changed and made them different and I like them a whole lot better. This one is number eight. Number eight is Cash and Guns. Now I enjoyed Cash and Guns okay, 
when it first came out. The thing that really kind of threw me off of it was the whole police thing mechanic where, mm -hmm. and, and, and to this day, because I really haven't, because second edition came out and I've played it so much more, I really don't understand how the police thing worked. Did they jettison that in the second yeah, one? Yeah, they did. Well, it wasn't something you had to play with. It was just an alternate no, rules. No, it, it wasn't, but I just felt kind of weird. You passed the card underneath it, the table. I know, they, I liked they it. Have all this stuff. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It's a little it was, fiddly, though, because it's like everyone's passing this card and yeah, one person has to flip the card over. Yeah. I, and it was too easy to mess up on top of that. And that's what I didn't like about it as well. If you drop the card or something like that, it's like, oh, wait, wait, everybody, just, just look up at the ceiling real quick up here. <laughs> and I just didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't like that part of the game, the artwork. I didn't really like the artwork of the first one either. Um, so when second edition came out, streamlined rules, new artwork, Everything clicked a lot better than in the first one. It has really kind of hit its stride with me now. And I really enjoy Caching Guns second edition much more than I ever did the first. Uh, of course, all the expansions that came with the first one, I think you can still use with the second. It doesn't really matter. But uh, I really enjoy it a lot. That's my number eight Caching Guns second edition. It's funny because the first one was on my, well, I guess the both, both combined were on my the, my list opposite this list. Yeah. Shame. I know. You're wrong. Shame. I'm wrong. My number eight has had almost, I uh, actually, almost, I, I, almost no changes, but I think in the newest edition there's like a few tiny minor changes maybe, and that is Through the Desert. Mm. Through the Desert, they just reprinted it through Z-Man Games or Windrider or whatever. Which, Who knows whatever anymore. it was, right? FFG. But FFG so. had a small version. I originally had the big, uh, the big German version and the big yellow boring box mm -hmm. of the desert. Um, and <clears throat> I played it, and I said, "This is a pretty good game." But every time I play it, I think, "Wow, this is slowly moving up my ranks of becoming one of my favorite games." I like how simple it is, how easy it is to play. Just on the cruise, I taught it like three or four times. Really? Yeah, yeah. It just I like this game. It just. It's one of those games that shows how the simplicity of rules can make a great game sometimes. There's no exceptions, no weird things. It's just put two camels on the board. Truth be told, you bought this game because you thought the camels were edible, didn't you? No, but if they had been edible, I would have bought it faster. <laughs> no, I mean, and that's another thing, too. This candy, game is one of the few candy, games camels, where they keep upgrading it and they keep reprinting it, but they continue keeping those original components. Yeah. Yes. Because and they really they haven't that. messed with the rules very much. I don't know what you're talking about. That no, they changed, I think no. There's but. two sides of a board. There's another on the new one. There's a, like a uh, crossing a river gives right. you an extra whatever. Right. That's what I'm saying. Very minor. But other than that, though, it stayed the same, and yet my appreciation of it has continued to go up. That's good. Number seven. This one is the newest game on the list for me, and uh, it's one that we just played not very long ago, uh, all three of us. This is Rising Sun, my number seven. And Rising Sun, when I first played, was a prototype demo bit that I played with you, I remember that. Board Game Geek Con. At Board Game Geek Con a few years ago, and uh, and it was, it was interesting. I liked the theme, I liked what was going on. Obviously, no miniatures or any of that stuff at that point. But the... This idea of like there's going to be a lot of negotiation in this game. It's a game that is, you know, its grandfather is diplomacy and there's all of this. And then this uh, really cool combat mechanism. Well, both, both of those things really fell flat for me the first time I played. And I thought, okay, eh, this isn't, this isn't as good as I was hoping it would be. But the more I played, and especially this to last time I played, where I played with you guys, and it was a three-player game. It was us. It's That's just, the difference. I mean, when you play with... Oh, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. The difference is that he won. You'll like it. You know, that's the thing. Or if you win. Um, that's, that's, that's what it comes down to. Play with them too, or just win. And you'll like a game. That's my advice to you Did today. Did we really throw you, your train of thought off that much? Actually, Isn't that what I was talking about? At, you'll actually find that if you play with us two, you'll probably win. <laughs> oh, there you Those go. two things are actually the same. Yes. Uh, no, I, I've, I guess I've kind of come to... Um, What's the saying? Uh, the realization. Come to terms with Ooh. the realization uh, of the, the diplomacy like in the game is just not that strong. I, it, for me, in my opinion, I think the diplomacy aspect of the game was overhyped. I kind of got oversold. I think it's a little. There's a little bit there, but I don't think it's as prevalent as it sounded. It would be. And the combat system, I've grown accustomed to it, and I can now sort of embrace it for what it is. Let's say. So yeah, it's 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 
risen for me. <laughs> oh, uh, I see what I did. I see what you did. Anyway, that's my number seven. If you weren't the editor, I would tell the editor to cut that out. I can still cut it out, boss. <laughs> All right, my number seven. When we first got into modern gaming, Ooh. I said, let's go buy the highest rated games on Board Game Geek. And we did. And I said, this is the number one game. <laughs> Next. And that's Puerto Rico. <laughs> um, Puerto Rico, I played it. That wasn't a bad game, but I was like, this, this is, is what people are ever. hyped about. And as time went by and I played a lot of other games, I was like, oh, yeah, this game is kind of better than most of these other games. And <laughs> also the expansion, the buildings, not, not the new expansion, the buildings, the extra buildings where the buildings were different each turn. And then I got it as a computer game and played it like 80 times in that. Wow. Which... And I just, I just found more and more how streamlined it was. I'm seeing more and more Euro games come out over the past 20 years, right? There's so many Euro games, and they all do different things, and very few can approach Puerto Rico and just how elegant the game is. I pick a role, everyone does it, I get a special benefit. Lots of games do that nowadays, but yes. this game kind of pointed that way, and it really holds up well. I still have it in my collection, like it a lot. Puerto Rico, my What's number... Seven. What's the new expansion? There's a new expansion? Well, no, no, no. Newer, well, newer than the more well, buildings? Well, there was the more buildings. When they made the deluxe version, they had, like, nobles. They were little red pieces or whatever that would come over to and do something different. It was a little minor oh. thing that they added. <laughs> it, it's okay. It's good. I mean, but it's, the buildings really made the difference for me. Well, I agree with you that if Puerto Rico came out today, it would feel like a modern game. I think Euro games are largely doing the same stuff that they were doing when Puerto Rico came out. Is that a... Is that a positive for me? Comment? It's, well, not. Well, no, is that he, a he negative just, comment? He just criticized all Euro games. I just, that, I, I just picked up Puerto Rico a little bit and I put down that was the, the typical negative. Euro game a little bit. I mean, I did both. <laughs> Why can't negative. I do both simultaneously like a flourish dance? Just like this is a behind the scenes part. That was a negative comment from Z Garcia right there. Wow, he confused. veiled it as a positive comment, but that was super negative. I can neither confirm nor deny <laughs> that that was a negative comment. What is your number seven? I'm My confused. number seven is a game that actually, and this is kind of a strange one, you're going to have to do some editing wizardry about this one because the, the <laughs> game that I'm bringing Just up make the screen first go to black. Is, is King Domino. Okay. But the game that actually make me made me like King Domino better was Queen Domino. So you like the guy well, okay, then. but when you met his wife, now the guy is better. That just got extra weird. No, that's not it at all. Basically, Queen Domino weird. does the exact same thing that King Domino does. Yes, but better. But better, right? So it like adds King other things into it that make it more than just pretty dominoes. Yeah. Because that's generally Which what King Domino is. next in the is. line, by the way. Huh? Pretty Domino. <laughs> Pretty Domino. <laughs> Princess Animo. Or I don't know. That's just weird. I'm calling it, it out. Is. It's going to happen. But here's the thing. I, I thought that King Domino was simply just Pretty Dominoes. That's, that's what it was. Queen Domino takes that core and made it better, more interesting, more decisions that have to be made rather than just piecing together your countryside uh, and having same colors match. It, there's more to it than that. I like the knights, I think, that are, that are in there, uh, the fortresses and all that kind of stuff. I, I liked everything about Queen Domino, and I thought this is what the original game should have been. Ah, it's twice now you've it done that. It is, because I really think, I really think, Sometimes, not all the time, of course, but sometimes people come out with a game and they're like, this is great. And then a couple months later, they're like, you know what? We should have done this. I think that, that's normal human we behavior. We should have done this. And then they, they come out with an expansion. And they come out with a second edition with that change or those changes made. And they're like, oh, yeah, here you go. We just thought about it. Nah, I don't know about that. I think sometimes games are dumbed down by people who underestimate people's intelligences. Did just call you dumb? No. I feel no, like you, you No, no, I did not. I said, I said games, games are dumbed down because people <laughs> underestimate the intelligence of the people. Right, right, right. That's what... Like that's some what, games are stupid <laughs> and some games are not. But, but every now and then you do play one and you go, wow, what a goofy game. And... <laughs> It's just not a, this game isn't bringing it. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, my number seven is... <laughs> Which one is it? I'm so confused now. 
King Queen Domino. I don't know. I think it's I think it's just Queen Domino. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Editing wizardry, Editing wizardry. You Indeed. shall have no number seven. <laughs> number six. All right, in the oh. spirit of uh, giving you things, to <laughs> things to have to edit, huh? Not yeah. really. Um, but well, me and Sam both got pretty hot under the collar one year. Add a fire effect. Got it. <laughs> what else? At Origins, when Battle Lore lost. The Origins Game of the Year. Oh, yes. To one of the uh, tree house, one of those ice house pyramid things, right? Oh, my God. Okay, goodness. okay. And I was like, um, there's a little pyramid game. It was like two player Battle strategy lore. game. It was like two player strategy game, wasn't it? It was some little some little dinky game. One of their, one of their... No, 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 but I mean the category was like two player strategy game or something. Oh, that. I think it was Game of the Year or whatever. Oh, was it? Oh, that's even worse. But anyway, we were like, what? <laughs> okay. And every time okay. I saw the pyramids, I'd like, these are really neat. And I would play a game or two of it, and I'd be like, eh, eh. When they put it all in that box, that Ice House Pyramid, pyramid, Arcade. pyramid Arcade, which I guess is the, the entry here. My opinion of the pyramids has gone up tremendously. Not, I've always thought they were neat, right? Yes. But I've always been kind of uh, not a fan of, uh, here's a box of components, and we'll make a game around it. Because it almost always is a mess. Yes. It's almost always, there's 80 games in that box, and three of them are good. And I have a very, very, you know, oh, we have big name designer A, who gave us his absolute worst game he's ever made yes. in this box. As, mm -hmm. as they would, because it's a game being packaged with another eight games. But this one is different than those, because all the games are designed by pretty much the same person, Andrew Looney. Some yes. of them are designed by other people, yeah. but most of them are from him. And he's had years and years to hone these games down, and some of the games are really good. Right. And putting all the components in. So I've really come around on Ice House Pyramids. I really like them. I think they look good, and they don't look like a pile of stuff that you're like, what is that? No, they look like some cool pieces you want to mess with. So mm -hmm. the Pyramid Arcade has really brought up my opinion of the pyramids. Okay. Cool. Nice. I like it. My number six is a game that was actually on my... I think overrated list that we did at Dice Tower Con. Ooh. Agricola. A long time ago. Agricola. New. Um, the counter. No. Well, then I don't know. Because those are the ones that I, I had an issue with one, and everyone in the world had Zombicide an issue with the Zombicide was on my That's right, it was. Games. Oh, Zombicide the first was, one was oh, on yes, that list. Yes, uh -huh. Because we got it in, and I was like, oh, this looks awesome. This looks great. I'm going to play this, play I it with my family. It, cherish it. And oh my goodness, we hated one rule. Right. That whole right, right. friendly fire rule where if you shoot into a space and you have to target your people, your survivors first. And the only way you can avoid having I to do that. I don't want to kill you, but you're in the same I know, spot right? you're as in, that zombie. Is to have a scope on one of your rifles. Right. And if you have your scope, you don't have to do and all this other kind of stuff. I think that's how the rule went. It may not be, but this is, I hated this game because of that one specific rule. And I also, know there was might, no orcs. There, no, it has nothing to do with it. That might seem a little <laughs> petty, but it really threw the entire feel of the game off for me because it just didn't make any sense. It just seemed so unintuitive to do that that I was like, this game is stupid. I'm not gonna play it anymore. Then, Zombicide Black Plague came out. And yes, they opened the heavens, changed that rule uh, to where it made more sense and where there's still a chance that you could hit somebody, yeah. but you didn't have to target them first. Which is so. They also got rid of like half the ranged weapons. They did. They did. And so I understand yeah. that really these are different games, but really Zombicide Black Plague is. is the, like a second edition to Zombie yes. That's the way I look yes. at it. It has a different theme on it, yeah, and all of this kind of stuff, but I really do enjoy Black Plague. I'm really, uh, I've already been able to play Green Horde once at uh, Gen Con last year, um, but I'm really looking forward to more plays of Green Horde because I like how they continue to build upon uh, Black Plague. They're just making the system better and better each and every day. What's so next? I really enjoy that a lot. So. Zombicide, but I like it better because of Black Plague, which is really so which kind of the second the edition. I don't know. You're going to have to figure that out. <laughs> 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 
fairy, fairy opia is Dex. You know, yeah. there's a bunch of fairies that have oh, turned okay. into zombies. I don't know what else they can do. Oh, okay. Animals. You know, I considered Zombicide Black Plague for my list, uh -huh. but it wasn't really like the, it, it. What happened with me in that game wasn't exactly what happened with these, where I play first, liked or didn't, but then mm -hmm. it got better. Yeah. I just resisted playing for a while because I figured I wouldn't like it. Oh. Because it looked overwrought. It looked like there was a lot going on. Yeah. And when I finally did play it, I think we played for the first time together. I was like, "Huh, that's a good. That's good. That's <laughs> cinematic, yeah. and it's a It looks good like game. a dungeon crawl, and you don't know more you like." Correct, those. right, correct. And uh, and I also for don't like games that are very reason. fiddly. Games that have a lot of rules to simulate a lot. But and it's kind of on the verge on on that. But no, it was super engaging. So yeah. Cool. All right, that's me with my number six. My number six is a game that actually got better for me the more I played the other games from the same designer that attempted to do basically the same thing. This is from Carl Chuddick, who has made um, Glory to Rome and several other games based on Glory to Rome. <laughs> the one I like the best from his is Uchronia, which is the one that most people like the least because it's the most streamlined one, the most colorful, the it's just the simplest, the most Dinosaurs. engaging. Yeah, it's kind of a weird, you know, um, anachronistic sort of theme, but I do like the way it works, and I like that it takes some of the concepts from um, Glory to Rome, which came out first, and simplified a lot of it and streamlined a lot of it. Then the designer also made um, Motainai, which is interesting. And it's clever, but it's heady. It's really heady, difficult to teach, difficult to grasp, way more than Uchronia. And so, I, again, I sort of continue coming back to Uchronia as being my favorite one because it accomplishes giving me a strategic card game but also letting me teach it to the average gamer. You know, that's the main, main reason there. So that's my number six, Uchronia. Huzzah! All right, my number five is uh, the first one, and these are the games that have just gotten better over plays. Uh, these are the ones that uh, the first time I played it, I was like, eh, whatever. But then with more plays for a number of different reasons, they've, they've continued to grow in my opinion. My number five is a game called Quantum. Now, Quantum is a game that I was first introduced to, I think, three three years ago, maybe four years ago, at Dice Tower Con. And uh, the guy that taught it to me, we, we see each other at Dice Tower Con, and we're, we're always you know, kind of ribbing each other about how, how bad he beat me the first time he, we played Quantum. And I mean, he trounced everybody at the table. He was teaching it to myself and two other players. Bad teaching job. And no, no, Here's no, a new game. no, 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 he did a what great a time. Jerk. He, he did a great job teaching the game. But he just didn't hold back. He was like, now... Was well, this Vernon? This is... No, 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 no. No, this, I'm kidding, because it has math. Here, here's the... Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're just hitting everybody today. He, he would be like, you know, okay, now, now here, here's why you, you shouldn't have done what you just did. Because I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to pound you into Stardust. Um, and then he would get up and do a little dance. <laughs> No, he wasn't. He wasn't gloating. It was just here. Here's the no. thing. First of all, I usually don't like mathy games, which is what you just pointed out. Yeah. There is a lot of math in the game. Now it's basic math, but still, I am kind of lazy in that respect. I don't want to have to do a lot of basic math in a game. I'd rather just enjoy the game and play it. So there's a lot of basic math that's in the game. Yeah, and I usually don't go for games like that. I like the theme. I like the look of the game. I like the big chunky dice, but the way you play the game is just was a little bit too much. And then the fact that he just trounced us outright. Further so put me off Did of he that win? Game. Oh yeah, he. <laughs> she whiz. If I ever see anybody <laughs> playing Quantum at Dice Tower Con, I'll just walk right up to him and be like, "Did you teach it?" And before no. he's done answering, like, Psh. No. I was actually gonna shake no, his you hand. You, uh, he's like, he's like <laughs> twice you. your size. Uh, you won't want to do that. I'll just walk away. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Ever since then, I've played it a number of different player counts, uh, and that's one of the cool things about the game. Each each player count has a different setup that you can use in the game, and I really enjoy it when games do that. Um, I like the variable player powers of the game that uh, kind of uh, makes things a little bit different for each player as they play through the game. There's just so many things about it that I like now that just further enriches as I play it more. So my number five is Quantum. Cool. My number five is a game that uh, it is now, in my opinion, what it should have been from the beginning. 
and that is Elder Sign, which, and I've talked about this before, so I'll try to keep it brief, but basically Elder Sign before used to be set inside a museum, and you were walking around that museum encountering all sorts of crazy stuff, and chucking dice, and having This is why I don't encounters. go to museums. Yeah, well, I wouldn't go to that museum, and you if I was in the museum, I would probably walk out. You get to chuck dice in a museum? Yeah, and open relics and stuff, and go to other worlds. I, I want to go to museums. Oh, that's crazy. Arkham, baby. Night at the Museum 4. <laughs> Cthulhu. Cthulhu. And, uh, it's a completely different movie. Once the expansion yes. started to come out, especially after like the second one, I think it was, the third expansion came out and they said, okay, you know what, we're going to blow the doors wide open here. You're out in the town, the entire town. And all the cards gained a back that would give you a hint as to what you were walking into with a color code as to difficulty. And then... Once you arrived at that location, you could do something printed on the back of the card, then you would reveal that card, and that's as you walked in the door of this place is when you would encounter what's going on in there. And there were several that matched the back, but the front was different, right? And it just became a game that was a lot more engaging, a lot more thematic, and then they really went crazy and started taking the, that new system that I thought was way better than the original that came in the game to different locales. And so they did one on the ice in, uh, in uh, Antarctica, and they did one uh, in the sands of Egypt, and they did one, you know, on an expedition uh, on the ocean, and it was like, man, that, now we're talking, you know what I mean? That's what the game should have been. This expandable or, like, adaptable dice game that tells an adventure, and before, it wasn't quite that out of the box. So it's definitely got it better for me. Uh, Elder Sign. It's a really engaging co-op game, and now with the expansions, much better, much better than it's than it's ever been. So that's my five. All right, my number uh, five is Seven Wonders, and this is because of the expansion. Oh, should I have made it seven? Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'll work hard. <laughs> All the expansions are Babel, especially. Really? Babel. Well, not even Babel, but the. Uh, the other one, the Babel was two, two seconds, two, yeah, two yeah, right. The one, the, the Great Works. Great Works. Yeah, I really like that. That's the one you like better yeah. out of the two. I also like cities. I also like leaders. Although leaders could actually be on my list too, because when Seven Wonders Leaders came out, I was like, meh. And over time, that one's grown on me. That expansion. Yeah. But even just Seven Wonders itself has grown on me because I don't know. Maybe it was overwhelming everyone was playing it all the time non-stop at gaming things and I was like uh, guys there's other games that exist besides Seven Wonders just because we have seven players doesn't mean we need to play Seven Wonders all the time we can split and play a four player and a three player no no we're still playing Seven Wonders and that was kind of my attitude okay but as time has gone by so many games that fall into that category for me why are we still playing this game? <laughs> well, yeah, right, right. But it happened. But as time went by, the expansions helped, and it's it has some nice staying power. I really do enjoy it. I mean, I I still like Seven Wonders Duel better, mm -hmm. but Seven Wonders itself has gone up for me considerably. My number yeah. five. Yeah, I definitely. That's that's one that has grown on me too. Um, Seven Wonders. And Ooh. the designer has been able to find a lot of design space in there. Yeah. They still have to come out with seven expansions. Just, just be patient. Number four. All right, my number four is a game that I think I own almost everything for it except for a couple of things here and there. And that is... Memoir. No. He Why always liked Memoir. Memoir be on this list? Sam liked Memoir before it came out. They were like, Memoir. Memoir. Sam was like 10. <laughs> Didn't even. <laughs> uh, something you have almost everything. It's my wife's for. favorite game, and that's why it made this oh, list. Carcassonne, yes, that is correct. I thought you thought Carcassonne was a game you're getting tired of. No. Okay. I don't think so. Not publicly. Well, you don't. You don't have to like doubt yourself here. I was just. No, that's what I thought. No, I, 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 I do doubt myself a lot because um, it, it's just hard for me to keep everything in line sometimes. But no, Carcassonne is a game that I uh, we originally played. Um, Oh, goodness, man. That when you were both seven. Years ago, oh not seven, but In years ago. School. And uh, we liked it. And then my, life, my wife liked it so much that she decided to buy a copy for me for my birthday 
because she liked it so much. Well, and that she is how the wheel copy, turns, because that's not the is, first time that's happened no, in life. No, it's not. No, but she enjoyed <laughs> it so much. She bought our first copy. It was in Korea, and uh, it came in a tin and all this other kind of stuff. It was, it was a nice copy, but uh, she bought it for me because she wanted to have a copy in the house right, and right, stop right. borrowing Tom's copy. But that's... Uh, where it kind of came from, I could have cared less. Matter of fact, when I got the present, I was like, oh, "Gee, thanks." thanks. <laughs> I wasn't like, "What they do for my birthday?" <laughs> thanks for the fantastic gift, darling. You know what right. we're gonna do for your birthday? <laughs> I'm not even gonna tell you. I know, right? Twilight Imperium 3. Bag of poop, <laughs> which my wife has never played. Anyway, uh, that's. I wasn't that exaggerating about it, but um, uh, that's exactly what I was feeling like. I, okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, let's move on uh, to the cake. You've gotten gifts before where you were like, thank you. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. Of course, everybody of course, of course. Everybody and else. definitely given gifts that are really for me, right? I mean, you know, people do that. People yeah. do that. What I've what I've liked about the game, though, the thing that they uh, that I've really liked is, is the um, Around the World series that has come out. Yeah. That's where I think this game has really hit its stride. My favorite one, my favorite Carcassonne game right now is Amazonas, which is uh, came out, I think, uh, last year, not last year, but year before ago, last. Yeah, um, and just what they continue to keep doing with the same basic core mechanism of taking tiles and placing them and building that puzzle around but there's other things that they add to it and that's what's really keeping it fresh for me and it's really brought it to the forefront uh, so that's Carcassonne my number four my number four is a game I did not like when I first played it and gave it a negative review actually uh, although time has come by it's one of my favorite games and is in my collection Wow! and that is St. Petersburg <laughs> when St. Petersburg came out, I was like, ah, I really didn't not like this whole sliding the cards. It felt like whoever got a good income system first won. And mm -hmm. then I, and then for some reason, I don't know what it was, I kept playing it. Someone would be like, let's play St. Petersburg. I'm like, second edition came out. Fine. No, this was no, before this was second way edition. Really? That, yeah. yeah. Oh, now the I second edition. The second edition is what turned it for you. No, I was already liking the game. Oh, okay. And I'd be like, okay, I like St. Petersburg a lot, but with two. That was my thing, yeah. right? And I still think it's best with two. When the new version came out, though, I was like, wow. Not only did the new version add another whole phase, which really helped the game out a lot. Okay. Added a whole bunch of other modules, which you don't need. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, I was like, man, I forgot how much I like this game. I played it more and more, and it just, it's great. I still think it's best with two, but I'll play with three or four. Probably not five. But St. Petersburg really, really has gone up over the years for me. I think I actually got your review copy of that after you... That's true. Trounced it. The artwork itself isn't helping that game either. <laughs> On either edition, frankly, but what do you do? Yeah. All right, my number four is a game that I also didn't like when I first played. And Pandemic. That's that's uh, uh well it's gonna it's, get it on the list. It's not my favorite game. Somewhere. It used to be yours. Cosmic Encounter. Ooh. And when I first played it. Oh no, no, it's on this list, it's not on turkeys. <laughs> yeah. Well when I first played it I was like, I don't get it, I what this is swingy and kind of stupid because I was approaching it I think from a point of view of like okay big classic fantasy strategic game and while I think there is there are some strategic points in it that that game I wasn't approaching it with the right mindset you know what I mean and I was teaching it with the wrong mindset as well uh, it also probably doesn't help that the version I the very first version I owned was that bad Avalon Hill one Mm. I mean, and, and I use the term "bad" kind of loosely, but the, the worst of the exp of the of the versions, let's say. But once I played some more, and I figured out, like, okay, I can see now where the fun is in this game, how to play, like, what kind of mindset to be in as you are playing. It's a lighter game than I thought. It may, maybe has a lot of rules, but it is a lighter game in the way you approach it and in the way you're supposed to enjoy it and play it. And it became a lot better for me to the point that now I really enjoy the game. And certainly new expansions or versions and, and expansions and new modules and things like that have enhanced it. So yeah, that's my number four, Cosmic Encounter. Number three. My number three has recently gone up. This is the one that has I've been playing recently. And it's because I played the game again and the expansions, both. And that is Raiders of the North Sea. Ooh. Now, Raiders of the North Sea, when we first played it, I said, it's a solid game. Put right. workers down, pull them off. I liked it. And then it uh, kind of faded in the background. And then Blood Raid showed up and other Viking games. And I was like, why did I ever play Raiders <laughs> of the North Sea? 
Mm-hmm. I've recently played it some more, and it's like, wow, I forgot how much I like this game. There's so, I mean, you really only have a few choices. You're going to pull one worker, I mean, place a worker, then pull a worker amongst five or six spots, and then, or you go out and raid. You really don't have a lot of choices, but they're good choices. They're solid choices, building up your crew, the deck, and then the expansions really make the game better. Mm. Uh, one adds mead, um, which you guys can drink and go out and make them stronger. Um, and the other adds stronger. Jarls. They just think they're strong. <laughs> yeah, they come back. I won! Where's can your arm? Be tall and bold. But I won! Yeah, right. And then the other adds Jarls that you go out and beat, and or you can make them join your crew. Some really cool concepts, and both add more cards to the deck, the crew deck, which is super varied now. And I just, it's just a tremendous game. I really am impressed with it. I remember when we found out this was nominated for a Spiel des Jahres uh, award this right, year. Right, and I was like, You were like, what? what? But what? now I played it, what are you talking about? I retract my, <laughs> what? And I go, yeah, that's a good one. It's definitely better than, what were the other nominees? The Road to El Dorado? No, the race or road or whatever to El Dorado. And yeah. what was the one race that... to El Dorado? No, wait, no, it was in the uh, it was in the higher category. It was going up against Terraforming Mars, I think. Oh yeah, 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 and Exit, I think. Yeah, okay, so it's still number three in that I forget group. Which or maybe Exit was in the lower. Ca- I don't know. But regardless, I no longer think it should not have been nominated. Right. Now that I'm like, what? This is an actually great game. I'm keeping it in my collection. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's one I need to replay because uh, I don't remember it that well. I don't think it made that much of an impression on me. But hey, I got to try it again. All right, that's me. My number three is uh, a game that, uh, from the first time I played, I always thought the end was a little abrupt and a little bit anticlimactic, basically, and that's Cyclades. Cyclades is a very oh, fun game. Oh, no. Cyclades is engaging. I love the bidding. I love the, the, the place it meets uh, in the middle between Euro-style mechanisms, you know, bidding. Co- collecting things and managing your money and stuff like that and then this idea of going out there and marching your troops and attacking and all that stuff conquering but the end was always very anticlimactic you know you would build up everybody would get one you need two two metropolis uh what is it, metropolis uh metropolis metropolis metropolis, metropolis. i have no idea metropolis i think right. metropolis is, 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 is. yes you would need two of them. You need and two of them things right there. You need two of them things, right? And uh, everybody would get one, and then you would build up, and eventually you'd like smack somebody and take theirs, ah, and the game's over, and it'd be just, it, it didn't feel right. And it came down to just winning the one character that lets you march. That's, that's kind of what it always sort of boiled down to, you know? And um, I'm not saying that that was the only way to play, I'm just saying it was still anticlimactic no matter which way it played out. But I think the Giants, the Titans, Expansion, get rid of that problem for me, and I think it is a must. I really do, especially if you've ever felt that way that at the end is a little less than less than thrilling. Because with this expansion in play, there's a lot more flexibility, a lot more movement, and and it it rebalances that feeling for me of yeah, you can do the money management, and you can you know take care of your resources and all of that stuff, but now you can go out there and fight on your own time and when you want as opposed to just when you win that character. It's great. Ah, this should have been on my list. I forgot. That's a really strong candidate for me because I, I liked it more than you did. I thought it was a decent Originally, game. Uh-huh. But when they had that expansion, I was like, holy cow, this is an amazing game. I, yeah. did, I got rid of Cyclades. And when that expansion came out, I was like, all right, I got to get it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's my number three, Cyclades with Titans. My number three is uh, an abstract strategy game. And until recently, because because of the same reason this game has grown for me, I've I've become to like uh, begun to like a, a lot more uh, abstract strategy because S four. <laughs> no. What are you talking about, Emperor S four? What did I say? You said Emperor S four. I believe I was coughing, my yes, good sir. Yes, I'm sure you were. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, Jim Below is uh, this one. It's my number three because I thought you what liked I, it always. I no, I didn't. See, Joe had it first. Joe Stebnett had it first. He bought it, and uh, he was showing it off to everybody. He had that, the one that took up like half the table, and I was like, "Buh." No need to explain it more. When Joe introduces the game, I was always like, "I don't like it." Yeah. 
<laughs> it, could have, it could have been like, this gig gives you free money. I'd be like, what's the catch? <laughs> Something wrong with this game. But I mean, this, I mean, I liked how colorful it was. I'll give it that. And that's kind of what has made me keep coming back to it uh, over the years, how colorful of a game it was. And it's still an abstract strategy game, really. That's all it is. Um, but the big, huge board just left too big of a footprint. I was not really interested in it. And then they came out what they called with Jimblo Light. And Jimblo Light was not a easier way to play it. It's just simply a smaller version. It was actually of lighter. The same game, and it was lighter. Yes. So uh, when they. When that came out, I bought that, and it we just hit the ground running with it, and we've really enjoyed it ever since. Mm. Each and every play mm. just gets better and better. It does get a little samey, but that's one of the things that I like about it because you can watch what people are doing and kind of have a good idea of what they're trying to do, and you can know best of how to stop them. So that's the sameness that actually is a good thing, in my opinion. But uh, I've really enjoyed it with every uh, consecutive play. Number number three, Jim Blow. My number two is a card game that came out in the wake of um, the juggernaut that was Love Letter hmm. from the same designer, and this is a game called Lost Legacy. Huh, I didn't know you were a fan of this. I am, and I have all of them that they've released, actually. AEG has put out all the little sets, you know, that have come out, and I have them all. The first time I played, though, I thought, this is just... A boring spin-off, sort of nonsensical twist on Love Letter. You take that back. It is a bad game based on Love Letter. Take it back. No. Don't do it. But then I took it back. You see? <laughs> because I, then I played some more and I sort of, again, I don't know, just readjusted what I was going into it expecting. It's not the exact same game, though it is very much based on some similar concepts. And the end, the first time I played, this idea of like, okay, once we're done playing basically Love Letter, now look for that Lost Legacy thing, instead of just reveal your hand and see who wins, left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth at first. I was like, really? So if you're holding it, you just win? Well, not necessarily if I know you're holding it. And it just kept getting better. And the more I played, the more I liked it because they were coming out with different sets. As opposed to Love Letter, they were largely, and I haven't played them all, but they were largely just reskinning it. It was the same game. That is correct. With a new coat of paint. Whereas Lost Legacy, it was a new deck with new powers, new abilities. And you could play that. You could even mix and match cards from different ones and kind of build your own Lost Legacy deck. And I do like that uh, better than, than uh, Love Letter at this point. So it's one that's certainly gotten better for me. And I'm glad that they're, they're you know, so far anyway, still supporting it and putting out new new sets with new themes and new stuff going on. So that's my number two, small tiny card game, Lost Legacy. Huzzah. What do you get? Here's a love letter. <sighs> nope. My number two is a game that I thought was boring at first because it's just a simple little card game with a little bit of money tokens on the side and you're buying and selling real estate properties uh, and then, you know, Disgusting. that's about it. There's nothing really else left to it. Try not be for sale. It is for sale. For sale has always been amazing. It, it's always been the same. In your opinion, yes, it I has been the same. I have played this a lot. I think this is one of the best gateway games that's out there because right. it simply is exactly what it is. It's so simple. And you can teach, you can teach the entire game in five minutes easily five yeah. minutes and that's what i'm looking for in a gateway game i want games that i can say okay this is what we're doing this is how you do it let's play nothing else is necessary uh maybe a little bit of a reminder after that first round that you know okay basically what we're doing here is exactly the same of what we just did just kind of in reverse where you're selling your houses for money. I really enjoy this game, but at first I thought it was rather boring, and I, I didn't really like it that much at all, but it has steadily grown on me ever since, and this is a staple for my collection at this point. So that's my number two for sale. That's We've good. had no crossovers so far. I know, and I don't think we will. I think we might. Number two for me is a game that is solely because of the expansions has gone from, Z like... A two. 100 and something on my list all the way up to like 18 or whatever. And that is Champions of Midgard. Ooh. Those expansions yeah. were yeah, yeah, so yeah. good. Okay. I like Champions of Midgard. 
um, even though it felt like a sideways move from Lords of Waterdeep to some degree with dice. Right. And there was a few minor things, but I liked it a lot. With these expansions, I love it. Mm. I'll play it any day over it's Lords of Waterdeep. I think it's a fantastically it's a good step game. step up, not a step sideways. Well, I'm talking about the basic game. Well, I know you liked it, but, but then you have a soft spot for Vikings. Yeah, um, I also have a soft deliver. spot for better games. <laughs> Just say we all have a soft spot for Vikings. They're like, huh? <laughs> we, Anyhow. We all kind of do, especially if they can find the chink in our armor. You know? Valhalla, <laughs> specifically, was the expansion that really changed things. That's but now, the extra dice and all that. The extra jazz, right? dice, you have a lot of choices. Your dice get killed. You're like, oh, no, I lost, but now I can get some other cool thing over right, here. Right. There's always good options in the game now. Just a great game. Champs have been good. I agree. And finally, number one. All right. I'm going to do the roll down the ramp. Oh, just, oh, right. Come on, why are you stealing the mic? What you get? 14. 14. Was that what you were going to do? Failure. No, it just happened right here like a ah. second ago. All right, I'm going to do it as well. 16, baby! Three. No! I'm gonna use the table. <laughs> Crap, it didn't work. Uh, All right, here we go. Ready? Crap! <laughs> it didn't work that time either! <laughs> Nine. That didn't work. Let me try again. No. Um, All right, what's the order here? Is the. Oh, we'll it's even go worse! Eight. I don't know. We'll go down that way, okay? I'll down let you guys be last. I think I know yours. No, you don't know mine. I feel like I know yours. You don't. I have no idea. No, no, and that's fine. I was kind of shuffling some of these around. Honestly, it's hard to pick one. Um, this is one. This one, I decided to make number one because it's it's a category of games. It's a kind of game. This is a Euro game. Kind of middle of the road. Wait a minute. A category of games? No, no, no. It's one game. Okay. But, I mean, it fits in a category of games, oh, okay. which I often find myself going, yeah, that's a game. You know what I mean? <laughs> you say about a lot is, of stuff. Not really. I think Euro games... It's and over 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. I think Euro games, and I think especially mid, maybe just a hair above mid-weight Euro games, for me, in my eyes, are the ones that blur the most into each other. They just sort of, they feel, sometimes they kind of feel like each other. You know what I mean? This one's Istanbul. Hmm. This one's Constantinople. All right, go ahead. I'll smack that hat off your head. Don't do it. And um, Istanbul, when I first played, it gave me a little bit of that feeling, too. Like, okay, this is kind of neat. It was uh, Rudiger Dorn, the designer, doing his thing with, like, the stack of tokens. And you walk around and drop one off or pick one on, take actions. Okay, it's a Euro game. But this is one that planted something in my head that I kept coming back to it. And it's definitely grown on me. Whereas many Euro games that when I first play and I feel... Ah, they're kind of middle of the road. Nothing stands out. There isn't a spark there. I just don't come back to them. Because there's so many of that kind of game. But Istanbul rises above that for a few different reasons. One of them is that there's no score at the end of the game. And I like that. I like that when you win, you win. You are gathering these gems. And when you've got the you know, required number, round ends. And if you've still got the most, then you win. And I like that the different actions as you are traveling around this bazaar and, and uh, manipulating money, manipulating goods, gambling. There's a little spot where you can go roll dice and do a little gambling. You can, you know, there's a lot going on. And you are able to transcend, or I'm able to, transcend that sort of cube-pushing feel that a lot of these games give me. So Istanbul is a good one, and I really enjoy it. Even more so because, like I said, it's in a category that doesn't often... Um, let a game rise for me. If I don't like it from the beginning, or if there's something there, I'm kind of done with it, you know? So that's my number one, Istanbul. My number one went from a game that I thought was okay at best to in my top 10 games. And that's because of a second edition and an essential expansion, or <laughs> whatever, Tuscany, and it is Viticulture. Because when I first played Viticulture, I thought, you actually quit the first game of Eddie Culture. You were so bored. I did? <laughs> yes, I remember that. You're like, huh. another guy came and then you were like, uh, do you want to do this? And he was like, um, sure. So I don't like, remember that. I remember that. But I'm kind of happy that it And happened. then when it was over, I was like, ah, I'm making wine. It was okay. You know, it was an interesting idea. Uh, but at the end of the game, kind of just wasn't as interesting. Now, when you have that El Grande worker putting them anywhere you want, that really upgraded. And then when we added 
Tuscan, it was like, holy cow, there's so many cool things here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the game just kept getting better and better. It really put uh, Jamie on the map for me as a designer. He's just fantastic. In fact, my opening and closing games were both from him. Scythe and Viticulture. Right. Um, so, anyway, that's my number one. Very good. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Is your number one a crossover? No. Told oh. you, not cro- no crossover at all. Well, then I don't know it. Why, what did you think my number one was? I thought it would be Cyclades. No. Because oh, so. that expansion changed your mind in that game, too. Yeah, it did. It did, but uh, it, there wasn't, I mean, it wasn't that drastic of a change. Okay. It wasn't that drastic of a change. My number one, however, is a huge drastic change um, because I did not uh, enjoy Cloud9 when, it, for, when I first played it. Thought really? It was, thought it was boring. Thought it was a convoluted, random mess. Because not only did you have the random card draw of what you had in your hand, you also had the random die roll to see if you can match what you had in your hand. That's the, kind, the point that, of the that game. Is, oh, <laughs> my goodness. It was, I, I just thought it was horrible, boring, and just not fun at all. But he has seen the light. I don't. I, I, well, they've come out with an expansion for a new version of Cloud Nine. It's called Celestia, and Celestia has this expansion called A Little Help. And now I like the game a lot because of what that little thing the expansion did, where you made it possible for the people in the. Uh, basket, whatever you want to call it, the airship. Oh, it's like an airship, yeah, right. To uh, to help the person, help the captain, if they wanted to. You could also play cards that'll hurt other people. There's just a number of different things that it does with the game now that I like it a lot better than it used to, um, because it used to be just a convoluted random mess. Now it actually feels like it has some strategy to it. Yeah, you still have the random card draw, you still have the random die roll, but you do have cards that you can use in your hand that will help the captain succeed or give you the ability to guess, jump ship if the captain doesn't succeed. But I mean, and, I like um, the game without it. that helps you mitigate stuff like that is, is, Absolutely. is nice. Absolutely. And that's exactly what, what uh, Celestia and a little help the expansion does for Cloud9. That's my number one, Celestia slash Cloud9. There you go. Positive list for you. So in your face. Oh my. <laughs> Let us, let us, let us end on a positive note, fellas. Now, right. if you have uh, games that you fit in this category, let us know in the comments. What's a game that you have grown to like as time has gone by? Um, that's I find these lists interesting to listen to because sometimes someone will say, I didn't used to like this game and I like it more now, and I'll go, huh, maybe I should give that game another yeah. shot. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. And that had, that, I think that's the, the biggest value here is maybe we will mention a game that you go, yeah, I didn't like that so much either, but hey. Maybe I'll try it again. And usually expansions don't make games better. They're just more stuff. If you like the game, you're going to like the expansion. Sure. But sometimes they bring it up above, and that's yeah. cool, too. Anyway, that's our top ten games that just got better and better. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for tuning in. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks.